Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can configure a new SLA timer on a form. Now, if you're not sure what an SLA timer is, let me just back up here a little bit. So an SLA timer control can be added to a form of an SLA enabled table. So for this example, I'm going to use the case table because out of the box cases are already enabled for SLAs. So the SLA timer is going to start the countdown to the failure time of each SLA item related to the case. So let's take a look at the legacy timer first, and then I'm going to show you how to add the new timer for the unified interface to the case form. Grab that popcorn, sit right back, and here we go. I opened the case here and then I went to the enhanced SLA details and you can see my SLA and then also my first response due timer and then my resolution timer as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trigger this SLA and this particular one is actually triggering on the follow up by field. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick today's date and it doesn't really matter what time, we can just leave it at 8 a.m., that's completely fine. I'm gonna go ahead and save that, and that has now started both of my timers. So if I look here again on enhanced SLA details, we see there are two SLA items. One is the first response, which is two hours, and then we have a resolution, which is eight hours. Now, because I'm triggering this particular SLA on a Sunday, it's actually pushing it out to the following Monday because I have my SLA tied to my customer service schedule. So that's what the legacy countdown or, or counter, I should say, looks like. Now, let's take a look at the configuration of that. So you can go to make.powerapps.com. Obviously, make sure you are in the correct environments. And then you're going to expand data that you see over here. You're going to click on tables. And I'm going to look for the case table. And here we are. And I'm going to look for my case two form. Let's give it a second here. And here we are. And I'm not sure if I can configure them here. I don't think I can actually. So let's switch to the classic form. And we can see here those legacy SLA timers. So if you click here on insert, this is where you see that timer control. So that's kind of how you can insert the timer control. And then if you click on that, you can see you can put a name in there, a label in there. Let me actually show you one that I've already set up, right? So you can pick which one is going to be your failure field, which one is going to be your success condition, your failure condition, your warning condition, cancel, pause, etc. But again, for each of those KPIs, you're going to have to put a timer control on your form. So it could kind of clog up your form a little bit. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the new control. So I'm going to actually put that new control on my form first. So I'm going to put a section on here. And obviously you can also do this at make.powerapps.com, right? Put the, put the section on here. Just put it over here. I'm going to call this Unified Interface Timer Control. 
And what you need to do then is put in a subgrid. And we are looking for the SLA KPI instance table. So let me see. Here it is. So again, you can call this timer or whatever you want. And I'm just going to leave this to all KPI instances. I can just then hop here to controls. And you're going to look for the SLA timer control. I want that for all of them. And then what you can do here is you can put an update frequency as well, right? That's how often that refreshes on your screen. So I'm going to do five minutes. 30 seconds is very short. So I'm just going to do five minutes. That works for me. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to save that. And I'm going to publish that. Okay, and now let's just do a refresh here. And you can now see my new SLA timers are showing in that UI timer control section. And you see it's not really counting down yet to the second, but the closer you're going to get to that particular time, right, that failure time, you're going to be able to, to see it counting down a little bit better as well. Uh, let me just go ahead and, and show you what it looks like. Oops, it's the wrong process in here. But let me change that process. Okay, I changed the process. I'm now going to say my first response was sent. And you can see here it already said succeeded, even though I did not even save that change yet. Let me save that. And there you go. Now we can see on our new timer control that it also shows as succeeded. Thank you so much for watching this video. And don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Stay safe, everybody, and until next week.